You are a man. Shut the fuck up. Hey girl, do you got the you want to say? Don't worry about me, I'm a god. It was June 4th. I'll never forget it. June 4th. 2019 SM Entertainment revealed that Red Velvet will be having a series entitled The Rev Festival spanning three parts. The Rev Festival is a celebration of Red Velvet as an artist throughout the years. By the time 2019 came, Red Velvet had 13 albums to their name with an abundance of legendary concepts and iconic imagery to match. The iconic imagery from their previous eras were turned into attractions for day one of the festival in question, for their debut happiness, Red Velvet could be found in the jungle, which is located at the bottom left. Even the parrot is here. It features a red boat, which references the Velvet's one of those nights. Their first official song is Five Members Ice Cream Cake is turned into an adorable merry-go-round to the middle right, with its flooring being decorated in red filling? Icing? Not sure. Their first album The Red gets her flowers in the form of a full station. The Dum Dum Factory Machine is here as well a chess table to its left. The shot of the girl's legs outside the box in the music video is also referenced here as well. Their second album Perfect Velvet comes to life in the festival via the iconic House of Horrors which is located both in Peekaboo's music video as well as the album's cover. The Velvet Mania doesn't end there. Repackage album The Perfect Red Velvet gets memorialized with the iconic pink bad boy mountains, while really bad boy's werewolf head is right before the haunted house. 2017 gave us two more albums from Red Velvet, Rookie and The Red Summer. Rookie's attraction includes the monster man made of confetti, in the gooey mess also from the music video. The alien spaceships that Red Velvet were driving could also be found hovering right above him. The Red Summer's attraction is a cleverly designed fruit ferris wheel. Four of their fruits are designed to be seats while Wendy's blue orange works as the main wheel. It's also being held together by a rope texture, most likely from a fruit basket. Something I hadn't noticed the first time is that the entire thing is being held up by metallic straws as well as being mounted by strawberries on the ground. Summer doesn't end there though, their second summer album Summer Magic gets homage paid by its own right as well. The power-up milkshakes they were offering during the album's promotions are referenced into one big one, with their fruits seen on top. The seats are soda cans in their representative color. A detail I hadn't noticed before is that the ride is above a milky texture, most likely to resemble water, which has a metal straw attached to it. Yes, it's the same one from Red Flavor's Ferris Wheel. Lastly, we have Russian Roulette which utilizes Selgi's trap from the music video and turns it into a roller coaster. This roller coaster was demonstrated in the Rev Festival Day 1's Invitation promotional video as well as Zimzale Abum's music video. In this video, our Rev uses the capsule from the toy vending machine as a seat and rides through the Russian roulette trap roller coaster. This roller coaster spells out the letters RE which leads into day 2's VE. It spells out Rev. Speaking of Zimzalabim, a ticket booth is located in the acid, trippy goop around the rookie man. This ticket booth is where Wendy is located as a ticket master for the entire festival. It's worth noting that all the girls have their own representative jobs, while I'm not sure I'm correct, my initial assumptions were, Wendy is the ticket master, Solgi is the amusement park manager, Irene seems to be the hostess or employee for the House of Mirrors, Yeri is the employee in charge of the roller coaster and Joyous Bell Woman. The Rev Festival gets its name from combining Red Velvet, which also means dream or fantasy in French. It's also the name of Red Velvet's official mascot who serves as the main character of the festival story. The name of the festival is fitting, as Red Velvet has always had a fairy tale like concept and story throughout their career. It also suits the first day of the festival's title track, Zimzalabim. Zimzalabim means abracadabra, which is why in the promotional videos for the festival, Red Velvet says it to make things appear sort of like a magic trick. The festival works in this same way. As we could see, 
The entire festival is made up of knickknacks and toys which most came from the toy vending machine. These objects are not real, however with the magic of imagination, the girls make them real. We see this happen in Zenzale Abum's music video where the roller coaster toy wraps around Irene's head and enters a teacup. The next scene follows a teacup ride which is larger than the girls themselves. This theory of the festival simply being the magic of imagination is further fueled by a scene in which all four velvets are seen in 3D glasses. It's worth mentioning that behind them is a radial strip spinning design that's often used as a gag to hypnotize people in various media. The lyrics of Zimze Lab fit this breakdown perfectly, as it speaks about breaking conventional norms, chasing your dreams and allowing magic back into your life. It's no coincidence that the vending machine featured in Zimze Labim's cover art is most known to be associated with kids. The message of Zimze Labim could be perfect for adults, who have given up their imagination and dreams in order to assimilate and survive in a society that's not gentle to them. Red Velvet is encouraging you to re-welcome your inner child into your life and nurture them. This theme can also be found in the recent reopening of the festival, the Rev Festival, Feel My Rhythm. Where a child is seen with a cardboard box, redesigned to look like Rev's head on top of hers. Normally I would steer away from speaking about music and art direction breakdowns, but in this case, Red Velvet is one of the very few groups who make sure to tie in the theme of the comeback into the genre itself. Zimzale album is an electro-pop song which combines their red and velvet sides together to feel like you're riding an actual roller coaster. The genre hopping is comparable to the highs and lows of an actual roller coaster ride, with Wendy's high note at the bridge taking you to the ultimate peak of the ride. The chanting Zimzale album at serves as the final fall afterwards with the na 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 bringing you to a slow yet dizzying end. Its experimental nature managed to heighten the amusement park concept perfectly. There's only been a few times in which I felt K-pop songs have directly tied in with the theme and story in full execution. The best example besides this that comes to mind is Luna's High High, whose extremely high BPM in the chorus makes you feel like you're taking the final run around the Mobius with the girls. The Rev Festival had many elements, including the toy capsules, the balloon Rev Head, tickets and the special Rev Festival coin which was the first promotional graphic released for day one. This coin was sold as a keychain at Tissam's store. Speaking of physical items, the Rev Festival Day 1 came with 5 separate versions for each member. Each member is featured on the sleeve, peeking out at you through curtains while the festival is behind them. The curtains wrap around to the pack of the album sleeve, which is meant to cover the toy vending machine featured on the back of the album. The spine of each album sleeve features the track list of Day 1 in the representative color of each member's colors, blue, yellow, pink, purple, and yellow. When removed, the spine of the actual album is revealed to be Red Velvet's logo sectioned by 5. Underneath there's a small Red Velvet member in front of a toy capsule with their representative color. For mine, it's yellow with soggy. The physical album also has a holographic shine on Rev's balloon head. I hadn't mentioned it previously, but the Rev Festival Day 2 also has a holographic shine on the Amp Ampa sign. It's also featured on the back of both track lists. The color palette of red and yellow immediately reminds you of mustard and ketchup, very fitting for an amusement park concept as hot dogs as well as other finger foods are often sold there. It's also worth mentioning that research has shown that we find the color red to be very appetizing in terms of food while in terms of packaging, we find yellow to be very original and fun. Speaking of colors, the representative colors of the members could be found on the tickets which hold the trackless names. Sunny Side Up's ticket was Irene's pink, Milkshake was Soggy's yellow, Bing Bing was Wendy's blue, Parade was Joy's green and Yeri's purple could be found on LP. The ticket lists the trackless's attractions, opposed to Day 2 whose travel concept had the trackless transformed into luggage tags and labeled them as destinations. The carnival design of the tickets were also reused for the digital booklet which featured the Zimze Labim ticket in the member's representative color, wishes that the girls had for the group and this as well as the lucky coin from the festival promotional poster. The photo book includes shots of the girls in their carnival clothing as well as their amusement park uniform. The styling for Zimze Labim remains one of their boldest to date, choosing to go camp to showcase the eccentric nature of the title track. This choice left them ostracized by many which further the point of the fashion statement. Carnival, circus performers were seen as freaks of nature and on the outside of society for a long time. 
facing prejudice for not fitting into societal norms. The choice to go camping not only added to the fun, happy nature of the overall concept but shows actual dedication by the team to execute the concept correctly in every aspect. This is a direct reference especially as Joy is seen with a hula hoop in one shoot, most likely referencing the ring of fire often done in circus acts. The design for the lyrics in the photo book are paired with a half-tone texture, which I will admit is a misstep as it causes eye strain and pretty much leaves it unreadable. Small shots of the girls above specific attractions are also included in the photo book with Yeri above the happiness forest, Joy in front the rookie closet, Irene in front the ticket booth. Irene also above the bad boy mountains and finally Sulgi in front of the haunted house and bad boy werewolf prop. There's also a small graphic of the girls on the roller coaster ride. As I said before in my day 2 video, the typography and logos for the Rev Festival series remains one of their best to date. Day 1 features Red Velvet's iconic logo and the texture of a balloon, which is tied to the The Rev Festival text so it doesn't fly away. Zimze Labim's Coquette Gold carries Day 1's typography being featured on all the promotional material. It's easy to see why this was a font choice, the curly Q style of the type really gives you a circus feel. It takes a break occasionally to let Grover Heavy usher in a more readable font for the festival name and lyrics. Grover Heavy's font is featured on the magic kit that comes with the album. Like with all the inclusions, each kit features the color of the member whose version you own. Inside, a small Rev's head balloon on a stick as well as special Star 3D glasses could be found. These are the same glasses that are seen on both Wendy and Joy in the photoshoot and of course, the Magic Kids cover. This album also came with a clue ticket, like Day 2, which most likely contained a detail involving the next part of the festival. All in all, the Rev Festival served to be Red Velvet's most ambitious project to date with even its reopening bringing the same magic that Day 1 did. Its theme of never allowing anything to damper your imagination and lose the magic and spirit in your soul is admirable to say the least. With each new addition to the series came something to love design-wise. The Rev Festival is directly responsible for tailoring how I view packaging design and how I approach my projects moving forward. I thank Red Velvet and our team for always making sure to put an amazing amount of effort and details in their work. I'm still wondering what the Rev Festival prologue would have brought us. But for now, let's just appreciate what we have. Thank you for watching. Who the fuck is it? Jurassic Funny Morons from Cape. It's over. It's over. That's it. Okay? That's all I gotta say.